Picture this, it's a lazy Sunday afternoon, and you find yourself reclining in your favorite armchair, a bag of popcorn within arm's reach. The television flickers to life, and there it is, the opening scene of Gilligan's Island. A catchy tune drifts through the airwaves, promising adventure and laughter, and as you settle in, you're transported to a place where coconuts double as phones, palm trees provide shelter, and a group of mismatched castaways stumble through one hilarious misadventure after another. It's your very first encounter with the iconic 1964 TV series, and little do you know that the misadventures of these shipwrecked souls will become etched into your memory, sparking countless smiles and laughter in the years to come. Perhaps it was the slapstick humor of Gilligan or the glamour of Ginger that first caught your attention. Maybe the professor's ingenious contraptions or Mary Ann's endearing charm drew you in. Or was it the enigmatic allure of the island itself, with its hidden treasures and mysterious inhabitants? Whatever it was, Gilligan's Island carved a special place in your heart, a place where nostalgia and laughter forever reside. As we journey back to that whimsical island, let's uncover some random facts about this beloved show that will make you appreciate its timeless appeal all over again. So, grab your skipper's hat, put on your best stranded on an island face, and let's set sail into the world of Gilligan's Island. In the 1964 TV series Gilligan's Island, there's a little known fact about the song playing on Gilligan's radio. The tune is called Coconut Boogie, and it's performed by Jim Shipman in The Shipwrecks. This catchy melody added a touch of island charm to the show and became a memorable part of the series. Another interesting tidbit about Gilligan's Island comes from the series producer, Sherwood Schwartz. He saw the seven castaways as representations of the seven deadly sins. Gilligan symbolized sloth, the skipper embodied wrath. The professor represented pride, Mr. Howell personified greed, Mrs. Howell exemplified gluttony, Ginger epitomized lust, and Marianne mirrored envy. This unique perspective adds depth to the characters and the show's underlying themes. Lastly, the name of the ill-fated ship in the series, the SS Minnow, holds a fascinating backstory. Contrary to what one might think, it wasn't named after the fish. Instead, it was a nod to Newton Minow, who headed the Federal Communications Commission in 1961. Minow famously referred to television as America's vast wasteland. Sherwood Schwartz, not being a fan of Minow's critique, playfully named the ship after him. Surprisingly, Minow enjoyed the joke, and the two even began exchanging friendly correspondence. These intriguing details shed light on the lesser-known aspects of Gilligan's Island, making it more than just a classic sitcom. The show's history and hidden symbolism add layers of depth to its enduring appeal. In the 1964 TV series Gilligan's Island, a bit of trivia about Mary Ann's hometown emerged in the episode titled Two on a Raft. The show revealed that Mary Ann hailed from Winfield, Kansas, but it's worth noting that there's sometimes confusion as some reports mistakenly state her hometown is Horner's Corners. However, that was actually the hometown of her boyfriend, Horace Higginbotham. In the casting department, interestingly, Jane Mansfield declined the role of Ginger in the series. Additionally, Carol O'Connor tested for the role of the skipper, and Dabney Coleman tried out for the role of the professor. Lastly, a subtle detail about the skipper's character is that he wore a green emerald ring on his left hand throughout the series. This ring held sentimental value as it was worn in homage to his real-life father, Alan Hale, SR. The connection to the ring is even referenced in the first season episode Waiting for Wadubai, where the skipper, thinking he's dying, wants to give it to Gilligan. These behind-the-scenes tidbits offer a glimpse into the making of Gilligan's Island and the interesting stories surrounding the beloved characters. It's these kinds of details that continue to fascinate fans of the show, even years after it originally aired. In the 1964 TV series Gilligan's Island, the Lagoon set was located at the CBS lot in Studio City, Ka. This set had an unexpected challenge. If sequences were filmed too early or too late in the day, microphones would pick up rush hour traffic noise from a nearby freeway. This added an unpredictable element to the show's production, as the cast and crew had to time their shoots carefully to avoid unwanted background noise. Another interesting tidbit from the show is the skipper's real name, Jonas Grumby, which was mentioned in the first episode of season one titled Gilligan's Island, Two on a Raft. 
It was also brought up again in the second episode, Home Sweet Hut, when reporting on the cast of the ill-fated SS, Minnow, of which the search had been discontinued. Lastly, Lovey Howell's maiden name is Eunice Wentworth, a detail that was mentioned only once in the series. These small but noteworthy facts offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes challenges of the show's production and provide a deeper understanding of some of the characters. And that's a wrap on these intriguing Gilligan's Island details. In 1964, the iconic TV series Gilligan's Island set sail on a voyage that would become a beloved part of American television history. While many fans of the show are familiar with the quirky characters and their adventures on the deserted island, there are some intriguing behind-the-scenes stories that often go unnoticed. One such story involves the character Thurston Howell III, famously portrayed by actor Jim Backus. Interestingly, the role of Thurston Howell III was tailor-made for Bacchus by the show's creator, Sherwood Schwartz. Bacchus and Schwartz were personal friends, and Schwartz envisioned Bacchus in the role from the outset. However, when the show was being cast, Bacchus was initially unavailable, and his considerable price tag made him a costly choice for a supporting role. As fate would have it, Bacchus later became available at the last minute, and he had a change of heart after reading the script. He was drawn to the character and the show's potential. In a fortunate turn of events, CBS approved the additional funds needed to bring Jim Backus on board. This decision proved to be a pivotal one, as Backus' portrayal of Thurston Howell III added a unique charm to the series, making him an integral part of the Gilligan's Island ensemble. Now, speaking of character names, Sherwood Schwartz, the creative mind behind the show, had a first name in mind for the bumbling first mate, Gilligan. Although this name, Willie, was never spoken on screen, it's an interesting tidbit that hints at the depth of thought put into character development. Gilligan, much like celebrities such as Homer or Cher, is known by a single name, adding to his iconic status in television history. Lastly, it's worth noting that Jim Backus and Natalie Schaefer, who portrayed Mrs. Howell, made appearances on Sherwood Schwartz's follow-up series, The Brady Bunch. Backus made a notable contribution, appearing in three episodes of the show, even taking on two different characters. This crossover of talent from Gilligan's Island to The Brady Bunch underscores the enduring impact of the former series, and the strong working relationships among its cast and creators. In conclusion, Gilligan's Island not only entertained viewers with its hilarious escapades, but also had its share of fascinating stories behind the scenes. From the casting of Thurston Howell III to the character name Secrets and crossover appearances, the show continues to be a source of intrigue and nostalgia for fans of classic television. The shot of Gilligan during the season one opening, when the song says, the mate was a mighty sailing man, was taken from the original unaired pilot. In the first season of the 1964 TV series Gilligan's Island, there's a memorable moment in the opening credits when the song mentions, the mate was a mighty sailing man, and shows Gilligan at the helm of the SS, Minnow. Interestingly, this shot was not originally filmed for the series' regular pilot episode, but was instead taken from the show's unaired pilot. The unaired pilot, often referred to as marooned, featured some differences from the series that would follow. In this early version, the skipper's character wore a different hat, and the overall tone of the show was slightly darker. However, the decision to use this shot of Gilligan in the opening credits endured throughout the first season. This choice reflects the show's evolving creative process, and how certain elements from the pilot were retained to shape the iconic opening sequence that fans of Gilligan's Island still remember today. So, when you watch the first season's opening credits and see Gilligan at the helm, remember that this image was originally captured in the unaired pilot, adding a unique layer of history to the show's beginnings. And that's a little nugget of Gilligan's Island trivia for you. As we set sail from the shores of nostalgia, let's take a moment to reflect on the timeless allure of the 1964 TV series, Gilligan's Island. It's a show that castaways us from the hustle and bustle of our daily lives into a charming, secluded paradise, where every misadventure, coconut radio, and quirky character added a touch of magic to our screens. Now, it's your turn to share the treasures you've gathered on this deserted isle of memories. What fond recollections of Gilligan's slapstick antics or the professor's ingenious contraptions have you held close over the years? Did Ginger's glamour or Mary Ann's down-to-earth charm capture your heart? 
Perhaps you admired the resilience of the skipper or the bumbling yet endearing first mate, Gilligan himself. Whether it's laughter, nostalgia, or a profound connection to the themes of camaraderie and resilience, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Share your favorite memories or reflections on this iconic show that has endured the test of time. Thank you for taking this nostalgic voyage with us and for being a part of the Gilligan's Island community. Your unique perspective adds depth to the rich tapestry of this beloved series. Until our next rendezvous with the castaways, stay shipshape and keep those memories afloat. Warm regards.